evening. Please bear with me tonight. Um, I've got a bit, bit of a cold, a bit of a sniffle, and a bit of a sore throat. For some reason, whenever I go down to visit my daughter, I always come back with a, like a, a head cold. And I saw a throat. I don't know if it's the water down there being different that gives me my sore throat. I don't know. Anyway. Oh dear. Well, as usual, we're here for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. It's 35 days today, and he's still missing. 35 days where he could be out in the cold, damp, or 38 days with no food, no water, or 35 days where he's being held somewhere against his will, without seeing any TV or any use of the internet or anything, you know what I mean? Hi there, MG. Hope everything's good at your end. And just like this, getting hard to Focus on Sebastian because all we're hearing now on YouTube is the step, the stepfather, this, the mother, this. You know what I mean? And you've got the father, Seth Rogers, who's out there, boots on the ground, working his foot up to find his son. And then today I was on. A Facebook page and someone posted it because she'd seen it on somewhere else and what it was it was a photo of Seth Rogers and what was that guy who got sent down for the murder of his wife and two daughters I can't think now no and got a picture of him with his hands on his head right and she put it against a picture of Seth with his arms raised up and his hands behind his head. And it's like she's insinuating, oh well, because he was guilty of the murder of his wife and two children, then Seth has got to be guilty. Well, I'd like everyone to get their facts straight before they start going on these Facebook pages or anywhere else. Seth has got an injury to his arm. It was caused while he was searching for his son. Probably through stress as well. MG, I'm the same. It's like I go off, I go offline for a few days, and I think, what the hell has happened? Because all I see is these videos and coming up, and Facebook posts coming up again. Really? And um, it's hard to keep track of it all nowadays. It's a, it's a flipping circus. It's a flipping circus. And um, I think Sebastian is getting lost in it all. So I think YouTubers need to, you know what, say, you know what, Seth, um, Chris, Katie, you'll still be there when your time comes. Let us look, let us concentrate on Sebastian. Right, let us still be there. At the end of the day, they're not going anywhere. But they don't. They still keep going after the mother and the stepfather. And you know what? I couldn't give two hoots if there was out having lunch Easter Sunday. I couldn't. 
fly and <coughs> I'm sorry. I've really got that cold coming on. Really has. I can get to eat whether they go out for something to eat or or stay at home. Bye. Right? I'm describing one way because I was looking for this interview they did the other day where he was still in his trailer and she was back home. I couldn't find it. Could not find that interview. I know it's there because I've seen it. But you know what? I thought, in a way, I'm glad I didn't find that interview because I don't want to be talking and showing their videos. Because they don't do anything positive for Sebastian. I'd rather show the interviews by his father. Who is out there pleading for volunteers. Pleading. He's out there every day. Rain, sunshine, you name it. He's out there. <coughs> <coughs> he didn't go out Sunday because... He didn't want volunteers out there because he said he wanted the volunteers to spend that day with the families. And I felt really bad for him. You know what I mean? Who's he got to spend this day with? No one. No one. But at least it gave him, hopefully, a day's rest where he wasn't out searching. But then he's not getting a rest because he's got people phoning him, texting him. And it's the same questions all the time. Where are we meeting for our, where, where's the meetup again? Where are we meeting up for this uh, search tomorrow? It's on the Facebook pages. And nearly everyone on his Facebook pages shares it to their own Facebook page. You know what I mean? Just look on long. My son today, he came over because he forgot a few things the weekend. So he came over today and he's discussing this case. And he's saying, which are the best ones to watch for this case? And I looked at him. I went, pardon? He said, who are the best people to watch on this case? I just gave him the side eye. He said, oh, I know you're doing it. I said, yes, I cover this case. He said, but, I said, but there are some out there better than me. And I was telling him the ones to go for. Right? I said, but watch it. I said, because a lot of them are all about the parents and not about Sebastian. Right? I said, there's a lot out there who just concentrate on the parents. And I don't, I don't give a hoot. I really couldn't. To me, they are just someone, you know when you walk in someone's house and you walk up your feet on the doormat? That's them. On the sole of my foot. On my sole of my boot. That's what I wake up every time I go to someone's house. Then. Because I couldn't give a hoot. I really couldn't. So, we're going to look at, I'll keep, I'll keep doing this, I'll keep doing this, right? Um, what was it again? Um, what was I looking for? Oh, all right, yeah. Is it? Yeah, the news ring, right. Uh, go goes again. And this is the site I go to, I check every day. Right. 
and I can't find it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Right, it's the TBI newsroom. And it was last updated on um, 22nd the 3rd, that's March 22nd, 2024. And don't worry, I won't be talking. There's an app on my laptop I can use. <laughs> that's me talking. So we're going to read, I'll share it as well. We'll share it. Set this up. Hold on. Right. Let's start from there. Can you let me know if you can hear this? Right, because I'm not reading it, I've got a, a voice, what is it called now, a voice command thing that I use, it's a, it's, it's just where they read it aloud, so I don't have to, okay? Now, can I just say, they've got the date wrong there. Because I've got the 15th of March, 2024. 15-year-old <coughs> Sebastian Rogers disappeared. He didn't disappear on the 15th of March. He disappeared on the 26th of February. Oh, is that, oh, is that just the update? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. My fault.
lot. So, whenever I go on Facebook page, I'm telling you a few lot are the same, but I seem to see the same questions being asked. So, uh, what areas have been searched? Now, I showed a video the other week of Nick Ferris where he was took into the uh, the main centre, the command centre, and it showed you that on big screen the areas that have been covered and how they've been covered by plane, dogs, horses, door to door, everything is up on that screen. And I'm sorry, but some of the questions people are asking on Facebook are be repetitive because I'm sure, like it's just said, they've checked all the electronics. Well, they've searched all the areas. And we'll get onto the electronics in a minute, the technology part. Right? And I'm thinking, just because you're not being told anything, we, the police don't have to tell us anything. We don't. We shouldn't keep jumping to conclusions, right? <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I'm on silent on time. Oh no, no. Apart from you. Anyway, so. It's just repetitive all the time. And to be honest with you, I'm getting a bit bored just scrolling through and seeing the same questions and the same questions over and over again. Anyway, let's continue. Where did we get to? Right, this part wasn't it right? So we got down to here. Continue. No. So that's the facts really of the case, right? They won't tell us anymore. And a lot of people are questioning 
this um, telegraph, right, like that Katie took, right? Now, I'm sorry, but I've known in cases where people have took the polygraph and they, they've had to say, yes, you passed it, right? But there might be some uh, one or two questions they've asked that might just give them a bit of a hint of untruth, right? So by doing a polygraph, you can't, they can't use it in court. Sorry, can't use it in court. But it's just a tool for them to see if you're lying or not. Right? Sometimes it can be nerves. Right? So, they, always, they take that into consideration as well. Now, some people have been saying, perhaps Katie didn't know anything about it. Perhaps she did go to bed at 12 o'clock after that phone call was uh, quiz. Perhaps it was his parents that came in while she was sleeping. They know the key code for the house. Right? The dogs are at the back end of the house. Right? So they may not have heard him coming in. And I pulled up the, uh, the like, the outlay of the house, like the pictures that was on this website for where, you know, when they sell a house, they take photographs of it and they do a video of it. I managed to pull that up the other day. And from what I understand, right, as you go in the front door, Sebastian's bedroom is off to the left, right? And then I think the other bedroom it's just further down that corridor. That would be the bedroom they've got for Faith, I believe. <coughs> <coughs> right? Or, because the stepfather did say her bedroom's up, uh, up over the garage. Now, if that's the case, her bedroom is on the same side of the house as the mother, as Katie and Chrissy up in the loft area, right? So Sebastian's bedroom is over on that right-hand side as you go in the door. As you go in the door, then you've got the, the dining room. And you can see straight into the living room. But then you can walk into the dining room and you can see into the living room again. And from the dining room, you can walk into the kitchen. But as you walk into the kitchen, you're going past the other entrance into the lounge. Right, so there's like three entrances into this lounge at the back of the house. And then off the dining room, you go into the kitchen. And off the kitchen then, you've got their bedroom, the main bedroom, which is at the back of the house. And near the front of the house, you've got like some stairs that go up into the loft area, which goes up over the garages, which I believe is where Chris was on about her his daughter's bedroom being. I can't be sure on that, I'd have to re listen to this video tape of that. And the other day I was questioning about how the mother would hear Sebastian in his bedroom. Now, if she's in the living room, right, the sofa is again slightly like these uh, patio door things that lead out into the sun, sun room. I believe, yes. Right. And so the sofa's there, and then you've got the dining room, and then you've got to come into the entranceway where the door is, and go through another doorway place to get to Sebastian's bedroom. Now, that, for her to hear a thud 
It must have been a loud thud. That's all I can say. It must have been a really loud thud. Right? However, there's one problem I've, I've noticed, and a lot of people have picked up on this as well. In the first interview, she said that when she got up, she went to wake Sebastian up, and he wasn't there. So I looked in the kitchen, thinking perhaps he'd gone and made his breakfast. And I'm sorry, <clears throat> from her bedroom, you've either got a... I don't think her bedroom comes off the living room. I think you've got to go into the kitchen area. With, yeah, the, the living room, the lounge, you follow, follow through into the kitchen. Right? And there is another little area up there, but I don't know what they use that for. Don't know. Right? But it's got another door that leads out into the sunroom. And that's that's the door they use to go out the back, to go out that door into the sunroom and out the back. So to get to her bedroom, she's got to go past the kitchen or through the kitchen, sorry, through the kitchen to get to the entrance to go to her bedroom. So surely if she was going to get up and wake Sebastian up in the morning, She's got to come from her bedroom through the kitchen and either through the dining room or through the living room round into Sebastian's bedroom. So what did she feel she had to, to go and check to see if he was doing the breakfast? Would she not have seen him or heard him in the kitchen? She had to come through it. She had to come through that kitchen somewhere from her bedroom. To get through to the living room, to get through to the corridor, the entranceway, to go through another little entranceway, through to Sebastian's bedroom. So, <coughs> sorry, sorry. So, that has thrown me now. Perhaps she she didn't realise what she was saying when she said it. I don't know. But something isn't right. And then you've got people asking about um because I must admit I was one of them. I thought, well, wow, if Sebastian was going to go and live with his father. Right? Would she not have to pay him the child support and all that? Well, apparently, in their divorce, they had an agreement set up, right, where they didn't pay child support, he didn't pay her child support, and if at any time they wanted to change the custodial part of it, where Sebastian could go and live with his father, as long as both sides agreed, then Sebastian could go and live with the father. And the mother would not have to pay any um, child support. Now, I don't know how it works over there with the disability, but over here in the UK, it doesn't matter how much you earn. If you're entitled I talk to disability living alone, which I get. I could be um, a 20,000 or whatever job a year. I could still get that payment each month. It doesn't matter how much you earn. But apparently, from what I can understand, if you, it does in the US, if you go over a certain wage limit you won't get the disability and see in the uk disability is given to you so that you can still work 
but at any time, you, the reason you claim disability for could be for your back or whatever causes you not to be able to go to work. You still get that money each month to cover your wages that you're losing, right? It just helps you so that you haven't got to be. Oh my God, I've got to go to work because I've got my mortgage to pay. I've got this to pay. You've got you've got some money still coming in. So if you can't make it into work one week for your disability, then you don't have to. You're not worrying about paying your bills because your disability will cover that. But in the USA, I think it's different. Which I think I don't think it should. I think you should. Doesn't matter how much you earn, you should still get your disability. Soon affect what you earn. Anyway, so that was a mutual agreement, and it was it was apparently it was Chris that asked Seth about taking the basket. Apparently, Katie was a bit, I don't know, you know what I mean? She really, she wasn't sure whether she wanted to give up the custodial bit of having Sebastian, where she'd only seen two weekends a month. But I think it was a bit of pressure by Chris that she gave in. So it was all agreed by both parties that he would go and live with the father. There's no bad feelings about it or anything. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. And um, so that's that out of the way. There was no no going back to court, nothing. It was in the divorce agreement that if both sides agreed, then the custodial, uh, they could just change custodial over to the father. You know what I mean? So, but I think it was more, a bit more pressure from Chris, I think, to the mother. Not Seth, pardon me, not Seth. I think Chris, right, and the way he was talk, people are talking about how he had that bedroom for his daughter, I think he was planning that when they went back to court, that he'd get custody of his daughter. I don't think that would happen, because I don't know if you've all seen that video, of his ex-wife, Nina. I saw little bits of it because it's too much to shred time. Shred done a fantastic job. He gave him, gave the ex-wife the platform to come on. It was pre-recorded, right? So he gave her the platform to come on and just talk about her and what she's gone through with Chris. Right? And she's still fighting now to keep her daughter. Still fighting now to keep her daughter. And I just get this feeling like he's doing this out of spite. Because she said herself he doesn't like the fact that his daughter is uh, African, no, not African, uh, American, Indian American, whatever, whatever they call it. He didn't like that. No. And I've heard people go, well, he can't talk because his name Craig, but come from Scotland. No. It also came from England. Yeah, I googled it. 
because I live up in Scotland, I thought, I'm not having that name associated with Scotland, right? And there was a proud foot in England many, many centuries ago now, and he was a deputy. He's a sheriff, sort of thing. There was a proud foot in Scotland, so that name isn't just associated, the origin isn't just Scottish, it's also English. Right, so I thought, thank God for that. I was having kittens thinking that name had anything to do with the Scottish. No. Anyway, I can get rid of that now. What's that one? I can get rid of that. Uh, I want to, is this the interview? Yeah. This is one interview by the father. Hold on. Yeah, like I said, right? My son and I, myself, and I was quite surprised that he's got this case has got him in, him in it as well. He's so engrossed in this case, he doesn't believe the boy is dead. He said, until we are given proof, definite proof, then in his eyes, he's alive. And that's how I feel. Until we get definite proof, one way or the other, in my eyes, Sebastian is still alive. He's out there somewhere, and we need to find him. Right? <coughs> <coughs> so, and he was watching, he said, it really got to me, Mum, when I was watching that interview with Pascal. I said, oh, I said, you want me to watch all the interviews by the father? He said, he's broken, isn't he? I said, yeah, he's broken. But he won't give up. But he won't give up. So we're going to watch this interview. See, I like the fact the t shirt is wearing as well because he's a walking advertisement for his son. The walking advertisement. So, here, let's listen to what he's got to say. Um, just continuing the search, continue looking, not, not gonna give up. Nobody can make me give up. And where have you been searching? Where do you think he is? I've been searching everywhere. At that five mile radius that the initial search did, they covered everything there. But, but there's stuff everywhere. Oh, we got a lot of territory to cover. Everywhere. You, Katie, and Chris had a meeting with you. CBI today. Did you find out any new information? Not that I can discuss. Any progression that might show hope in this search? Oh, I, I always have hope. Can't take that away from me. And how confident are you that Sebastian is alive and what do you think he's doing right now? Uh, pretty sure he's probably playing video games somewhere. Nobody's letting him, you know, whoever's got him, 
They're not letting him see the regular news. They're not letting him surf the internet. Or else he'd know that I'm looking for him. And he'd know that he should actually be trying to get a hold of me. And that keeps me going. Is there a strong reason to believe he may have been abducted? I don't know if he's been abducted or if he's just, you know, over at a friend's house. Never know. But I'll know when I find him. I'll know exactly what has happened to him. And other news outlets were reporting that there were lights seen in the backyard that were caught on camera by a neighbor's video. Is that true? No. What that was was a trash truck went through, picked up trash, and when it left, of course, it went faster. It didn't have to stop to pick up trash. That's just false information provided by a particular person. Did the dogs ever pick up a scent for Sebastian? For my information that I've been given, no. Did they find anything on Sebastian's cell phone that would, you know, kind of show that he was going to run away or where he might be? Not that I know of. He didn't have any internet access or anything on there. He would have been able to call, text, take a picture, send a picture, use the calculator. That's about it. Uh, was Sebastian in school on Friday the day before he went missing? Yes, ma'am. Um, are you, Chris or Katie, or any of you suspects in this case? No, we're not. Uh, have you been cleared? I don't know. The investigation is still ongoing. We wouldn't be cleared until the investigation is done. But currently, from my understanding, they don't have any information that would attach us to any wrongdoing. Um, CPS has gone to Katie's house before. You didn't know about that until this investigation. How does that make you feel? That somebody somewhere dropped the ball because I was never informed. And I'm the biological father. I have joint legal, joint physical custody. Somebody dropped the ball and didn't reach out and inform the, the father, which is me. And I don't understand why the state dropped the ball on that one. And how did you find out about CPS? Podcast. And I mean, how does that, does that concern you, especially with this case that they might have done something to cause him to run away? I don't know what that really means, but I just know that I don't have all the information. Um, is there an official timeline? And I know people, you know, there was, you know, we went to bed at this hour, but does TBI or anyone have an official timeline as the series? I'm pretty sure they do, but. I'm not involved in the investigation, so I wouldn't have it. Have the three of you been in contact every day like you were several weeks ago about this? I was in contact with both Katie and Chris today, but I've heard he said his phone is open and available. Well, so is mine. You can leave a voicemail. Like seven or eight people have already left me voicemails today. I'm just, I'm going. You know, I get people calling me while I'm on the phone and it's like, I can't just sit there and answer the phone for everybody. If I did that, I probably wouldn't be able to get out of my house. There's been a lot of criticism over this investigation. I'm sure you've received criticism as well as the proud foot sent. How does that make you feel in a time where you're just trying to find your son? People are being, well, that those that goes back to those keyboard warriors I talked about on the first interview that you and I had. They're still at it. They'll never stop. There's cowards in this world. And then there's people who are go-getters. My, beat, my feet, they're on the ground. They're never going to leave the ground. I'm going to find my son. Do you think that was a job at the parents? the mother and the stepfather about his feet being on the ground i did period and plans you know today on moving forward anything any more resources being used on this investigation or anything you have to say about that the united cajun navy is currently sitting down there right now at 90 volunteer drive in hendersonville 10 30. That's when volunteers need to show up, 1030. Show up, have your ID, sign the paperwork, and they send people out in teams. When you show up, there ain't nobody there except for a couple people. 
that's because they've already sent teams out. They're just going to keep sending teams out until we find my son. Have there been um, a lot of volunteers coming out to help find Sebastian? Today there was, and I want to thank everybody who did come out. We're seeing an increase, and we're going to continue to see an increase. I'd like the whole state of Tennessee to volunteer, and then we'll hit other states. And you're Sebastian's father. Tell me, what is Sebastian like? He's a unique child, all right? He can be, he can, I mean, there's, it's really hard to describe my son. I mean, besides being unique, whether he's up to no good or he's up to good, he's still, he's just got that uniqueness about him. It's, it's really hard to describe. I mean, he's my mini me. If he, if he has a goal, he's going to accomplish that goal. You know, people at school, they liked him. All the kids are wanting to know when he's going to come back. They want to help and volunteer. Teachers are wanting, they're putting out prayers every day. You know, everybody, it's coming up. It's Easter. I'm hoping for an Easter miracle. You know, I could definitely. Well, now, there's a friend. There's a friend who used to go to school with Sebastian. Right? But he had to move. He, he left just before Christmas. But he's told his parents that Sebastian would all say that one day he's going to, there, there was a door from the classroom, this one unit where they, the kids would go. There's a door. And I suppose it's like a fire door, I don't know. But apparently Sebastian would say, one day I'm going to go out that door and hide in the woods, the forest at the back. Now this was on the Facebook page. And I trust this Facebook page because of who, who the admins are. Right? And, um, pardon me. And someone said, I hope she's reported this to TBI. Because if he had that in his head before Christmas, it just shows, it's, apparently he said it was because to get away from the teachers and everything. But I think there was more to it. I think he wanted out of that house big time. <coughs> <coughs> So I don't know if they report that to the KBI or not. I only use it in my life right now. And why did they search the landfill? I have no idea. They didn't, not part of the investigation. They're not going to tell me stuff. I am emotionally attached as any parent should be. And how often do you meet with the TBI? If I, I call them all the time. Call, text. Hey, any new news? They either let me know or they let me know. Are if, you are you happy with the work that all these agencies have done or do you think there needs to be more? There could probably always be more. We just got to figure out what more is necessary. Am I happy with them? I'm not unhappy. But you asked me that after, after my son's back and it's going to be, I'm happy. <laughs> all right. Because, and... In law enforcement, it's always goal-oriented, you know. Go to go to work, put a smile on your face, job done. I know that they're putting their effort, 150% effort into this. And I appreciate that. And I'm hoping it will pay off with rotation. Do you think Katie and Chris are suspects? I have no idea. Sebastian's been missing for more than a month now. What keeps you getting up every morning, going out and searching for him? Being a dad, having perseverance, wanting him to come home, well, wanting to watch him finish growing up. Do you wear this every day? Talk to me about this shirt. This right here is my own billboard to find my son. People notice people. 
People notice what people are wearing. So I am a walking handout. I have these in my car. Have you, how do you select that photo? It's so cute. Because it's cute. <laughs> it's got a smile. The last yeah. picture I took of him. Mark, now that's heartbreaking, you know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. begins tonight continuing our coverage right. into the disappearance of texas a&m corpus christi student Dyke. very active in the search right so that is heartbreaking it breaks my heart every time i hear and do an interview now if you haven't already I would advise everyone, I'll put the link in the description, to go over to T-Rev. Now, people are getting them confused with Trev Time. Two completely different YouTubers. Even though Trev Time is the one doing a lot of uh, YouTube lives on Sebastian, T-Rev is also a really good youtuber right and um he did uh an interview with the father of the other night right now dolly dolly vision is his own person you know what i mean i subscribe to i'm not gonna put him down i don't put any youtubers down Right, uh, but you see, when he was talking to father on his live the other night, a few months ago, he kept butting in, butting into the to what the father was saying. <coughs> Instead of just letting the father talk, <laughs> he couldn't do that. So, when Seth, the father, went on T-Rev, live, the other night, T-Rev, yes, he asked him questions, but he also let him finish his questions before he started another one. And he actually got more information out of it. Now, he has got four. Now, this is a good question people should be asking. Instead of asking, what are the police telling you? Because the police won't tell him nothing. Right? They don't need to tell him nothing. They need to ask him, what have you learned today off your PI? He's got four private investigators. Mm. He actually said in that interview, I believe, that is where he gets most of his information from mm. is from his private investigators so i think if anyone interviews seth again please ask him what have his private investigators found can can you share any of that information you know what i mean because the police aren't going to tell him nothing and it's like i mean Chris and Katie, that Chris said, they've all been cleared by the police. You just heard him say, no one's going, no one's cleared by the police because there's still an investigation going on. And until the investigation is finished, no one will be cleared. Right? <coughs> so, it's just, a shame but i'm i'm gonna find that t red i'll i'll try and find t red and um, so we can just play a little bit of
không có nhà mà mình cũng có ngon thôi nhà hai cỡ không có tiền à ăn nữa hả thế chứ mà Yeah, so. Yeah. <coughs> so sorry about this coffee. Oh, it's just freaking cold. Every time I come home from my daughters, I get this. Hmm. What news? I've got a memory. <laughs> no, I can't find it now. No, no, I'm, I'm subscribed to it. So I'll find it there. Ah, uh, 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 okay, that is. Uh, Help me. Come on. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. I will put the link to this in the description. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 I did do something about this today. Um, because I didn't hear it. Or I, didn't, I wasn't really taking it all in because sometimes I have to walk away because it can get a bit too much, if you know what I mean. And I don't like to, but I just can't. So we'll start from here. And it, it just it hit me emotionally because you said some things in there just that got to me at the end. And, and you talk about these things with God. And I feel like I just came closer with God these last two years of my life and i just that that got to me when you were talking about that specific aspect of it and i'm here my platform's here for you for sebastian rogers your baby boy that you're searching for every day i did share the gofundme i have it pinned up top ladies and gentlemen for everybody in chat make sure that you can go and show this man any love i don't care if it's a dollar a penny it doesn't matter it's pinned up top to go fund me for seth rogers he is out here diligently working every hour that 
Yes, the girl from me is in the description. If anyone wants to help, please go to the description. You'll see it there. Just click on it and it'll take you straight there. He possibly can to search for his son. And has have you learned of any new possible sightings at all? Not the, not yesterday and today, but I've got my private investigators working on it. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Does that mean he's got his private investigators working on it? So, and he said not yesterday or today that he hasn't had no new sightings. So have they had some sightings of a, a child fitting his description before? And that's what he means. He's got his invested PIs working on it. <coughs> yeah, that's. I'm just trying to figure out here that with Katie, have you been in contact with Katie at all? As far as because I I love the way that you said it would be you know great if one person's here, we'd split up. You'd figure searching and covering all these different areas. You'd be able to do that. Is is that even going on with you, Katie and Chris? Are you you guys meeting and or talking at least about where you're searching so you don't cross each other's paths and you know search the same place twice? No. No. The last time I spoke to him was uh Thursday after I made it back to Clark's. So uh, he wanted me to drive back to Nashville to do a interview on TV with him, Katie, and me. And I thought about thinking about it. I just never reached back out to him. Interesting. Is that because of the? And I want to ask you this: Is it because of what you heard on that Smiley Channel, the interview? Okay. It still stings, man. That was that. That's my flesh and blood. Yes, sir. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I don't think he wants to be dragged into all the lies that are coming out of their mouths. Because every time they do an interview, there's more lies. And I'm sorry, but if I was a father and I went on an interview with them. And heard them saying coming out of certain lies or whatever. I'm sorry, but it'd be like a a free for all sort of thing. Because I would not be able to keep my mouth shut. I would be calling them out left, right, and flipping centre. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to be dragged into all their that BS they are putting out there. Yes, sir. I, I agree. And it must have been. And, and another thing that touched me from this interview, you said specifically, is that you had to find out through the Internet. Through the podcast. <laughs> Nobody should get information like that through the podcast. No, it shouldn't. You should never have heard through the po a podcast about DCFS. They should have told him straight away. The mother should have told him. You know what I mean? Christ's sake, it was taking... If it meant having Sebastian for like uh, three or four months earlier than planned, then it would have took Sebastian. This is why I don't think... They have hidden. Because Chris was the one who came up with the plan for Sebastian to go to his dad. Chris was the one who spoke to Seth about that, not Katie. Chris had to work on Katie a bit to get her to agree. Right? So...
it was all, all up to Chris. So I don't think they have his in because why wouldn't they decide to say to Seth, can you just have him a few months earlier? And I'm sure he could have said, okay, I'll get, I'll pack his stuff up, I'll come and collect him on Friday, bring him back tomorrow. Right? <coughs> or I'll collect him on the Sunday and I'll bring him back tomorrow. I'm sure he could have got his parents would have come over to help maybe for the first week or so until he got settled in and until he got his work situation sorted out again. You know what I mean? And then got him into school just as a few months earlier. I'm sure he could have done all that. So that's why I don't think they have heating. All right? Possibilities ran out of the house in fear of his life. All right? Or there's a possibility that that thud she heard at 10 o'clock, so she says now, was him and he had fun and bumped something, his head or something, in that spot where he has that water retention, which could kill him, he's gone to sleep, she's gone in the morning, and it's this, what was it, a woman picked up on it, she said, when she went into the room, to, I went into the room to wake him up, and he was gone, right? Now, as a mother, if I was going into my child's room and he wasn't there, I'd go, I wouldn't be saying he'd gone. I'd be saying, he wasn't there. My son wasn't in his room. So, it's just the way she said she went in, woke him up, and he was gone. That was it. Apparently, Katie said she went in, went in the room, woke him up, and he was gone. So, that meant when she went in, she woke, went to wake him up, but he was gone. He wasn't, he, he was dead. Right? So she's had to act very quickly to get him out of that house. <coughs> right? Get him in a car and get him out of that house without anyone knowing. But why? That doesn't make sense either. Because if he died in his sleep, she could have said, well, to be honest with you, I, I did hear a thud last night, but I did talk to him and he said he was okay. So she didn't need to hide that either. So, I don't know, but we're going to listen a bit more about this. No way. I agree with you on that. And that that's another part of this interview that got to me. And I, I know we're not even close to that part, but you specifically said in this interview that you had to find out through that damn podcast that your son had some running with him and he was hitting him with the belt, et cetera. And I hate to even bring that up. I hate to even bring that up, but I can't say I blame you for not wanting to. You know, I'm, if they want to search... That's fine. You know, but as for an interview with all three of us, yeah. I think that's a little too late right now. Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, I do interviews to keep my son's name out there, his picture out there. When I listen to their podcast, they don't, they don't talk about Sebastian. Like I do. They can. That affects me a type of way. You know? Yes. And it, it definitely puts us not on the same page. You know? And I hate to say that. I'm going to say. At some point in time, DBI will hear this, law enforcement will hear this. Right? I've never heard him say one good thing about Sebastian. Flipping out the first interview they they did, they didn't even mention his name. 
The second interview, they mentioned his name and then added something else onto it. Then the third interview, they thought his name was being said and then more was being added on. So I don't blame him. He just found out through a podcast that even though they discussed it, that he wasn't supposed to lay hands or anything on his son, right? He just found out that his son had been, to our knowledge, twice, used about on him twice, because Chris said, this incident happened two to three years ago, right? And uh, it was something to do with school. He couldn't remember what he'd lied about, but that was his punishment for lying. But then, in the interview, before, when it first came out about him using the belt on Sebastian, he said, uh, Sebastian was getting ready, was, was just about to leave the house for school. Sebastian didn't have his belt on him. I said, where's your belt? Right? And he said something, and he went whack across his backside. Sebastian then went into school and told a teacher, and the school are mandated by law to report this. So that's two instances then. One because he done it be like because of his autism, he's he hasn't got any awareness of personal space. It can be right up in your face. That's not his fault fault. That is not his fault. Right? I'm sorry, you don't discipline an autistic child like that for turning around and saying, it wasn't me. All teenagers, all children say this. It wasn't me. You know what I mean? So you don't discipline a child with a doubt. So there's one instance, because apparently he was up in someone's face at school. Okay. The second incident was when he didn't have his belt on. So they got the belt and whipped him across his backside. So there's two instances. And he said one and one time only. No. Mr. Chris, as you like to be called by Sebastian, uh, <coughs> Sebastian will call you or whatever. I'll call you out on that. I'll call you out. Chris and Katie, me and the Proudfoot Jai Bower Sox family will hear this. Right. We're with you, Seth. I hate to say it, but we're with you. And a lot of people feel, you know, the same feelings here towards the this whole entire situation. I mean, have you, is there, I got to ask you this about this restaurant. Was there anybody else in this footage that law enforcement may have not questioned that you're suspicious about that may, and you don't have to touch up on that if you don't want to, but and again, what they showed me is what I asked, which was, I just needed proof of life. Cause I talked to my son on Thursday. I needed proof of life on Wednesday, on Sunday. And they showed me a clip of him coming out of the restaurant, getting in her, in her vehicle, you know. And just, I got to see my son again. Freaking out. It's okay, Seth. If you need to take a minute, that's, it's, we understand. <sighs> And we don't have to do this interview right now. I could wait till you're more mentally prepared. I don't want to, you know, cause any more stress on you. And I know you're doing this for Sebastian. As a parent, as a father, you are never mentally prepared to go through this. Ever. This emotion is heavy. Did you find it odd that there was no alarm system there at all? 
I don't have an alarm system on my house. Right. Where I live. But then again, my son wakes up to go use the bathroom. And when he wakes up, he doesn't turn on the light. But I'll sit there and scare, I scare the shit out of him most of the time. You're like, well, what are you doing? You know, just I ask, what are you doing? I'm going to the bathroom, Dad. Mm-hmm. Well, make sure you flush and wash your hands. I get it. I get it. I mean, it was just this question, you know, questions of, you know, Sebastian, did, this, uh, did his mom, Katie, express any feelings about losing custody? Oh, did, was that it? you got custody? Because I heard what you said. You said you were getting him this summer. Was he staying with he you for just the summer? So where I was getting him every weekend, now she would be getting him every other weekend. And he would be staying with me. So we're just doing a switch. Would, was there combativeness to that switch at all? Or was it smoothly done? Would you say on your end? I was open for it. Uh, as soon as Chris brought it up to me, I was like, okay, let me get him enrolled in school. Yeah, that, that, that's just some questions. That's I the, wanted my son to live with me. I, I've always wanted my son to live with me. Yeah. Yeah, what did you, like, as far as the video that you seen, I don't know if you can say or not, but what did you exactly see on the video that you seen with TVI? And you said Katie was there, too. What did you What did you see there? What she, well... She and Sebastian walked out of Roadhouse and got into the vehicle. And that was what they showed me. I gotcha. And did he look happy at all? Or in distress? He wasn't in distress. Was he? He's always happy when he's with me. So, you know, he didn't look like his joyous self that he is with me. Oh. But, you know, he's different out there, and I know why now. So, Mm-mm-mm. you know, they may have had a good day, good weekend from their point of view. But it's like when he goes and gets in my truck when we're leaving dinner, you know, he runs to my truck. On this one, he just kind of walks. Light up the you chat know? with them green. Yeah, light up, light up the chat with his favorite color, guys. Light it up with them.
Walker and started painting the wall. It was messy. And I appreciate you sharing those moments with us. And uh, Those things are important to me. Those cherishing little moments, I feel like those questions, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. Now, I, I do want to ask you this, and I know I can already tell, but I just want to shoot it. It's How has your son's disappearance impacted you and your family emotionally and psychologically, sir? I, I want people to understand this. Uh, My life has been on hold. You know, I, I try to tell people there's really no going to sleep. If I sleep, I have nightmares. I wake up thinking I hear Sebastian in my house. I've had, I, I've woken up in my sleep and Sebastian is standing next to my bed. And, you know, he's wearing a white t shirt. And, his jammy pants. And it's like, it's not even him at, at the age of 15. It's, it's him at the age of like nine or eight. And he's just like, Dad, I'm hungry. Can we have breakfast? And I'm like, I, I wake up and he's not here. And it's like, and I look over and I've only been asleep for like 20 minutes. And it's like, well, fuck it. Get up, wash my face, put on clothes, and decide where I'm going to go search today. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, because I think it's important that under that people can understand what you're going through with just waking up every day and having to toughen up to go to these places and actually search for your son and what it can do to you emotionally and psychologically. That's, I appreciate you touching up on that. Now I, I do want to ask you this. Can you describe the events leading up to your son's disappearance and how you first realized he was missing? Did you get a phone call? When did it happen? When did the shock come to you? When, you know, I'm just curious about that and when you how you first heard it. I don't know when the shot came to be honest. There's not there's not a defining point. You know, I, I got off of work at seven o'clock. Yes, sir. Left, went to my truck. You know, to me it was just a normal day, so I'm talking to my coworkers. And like, you know. Monday morning, we're off for the next two days. You know, so it was like, you know, it was just normal conversation. With, you know, go home, get some sleep, you know, try to rest up, see you day. And I went and got in my truck. I grabbed my phone. And I think I have a missed phone call or a text message. No voicemail. So I turned around and text message 911. And that's why I'm So you. It's a shit way to find out. Then you find this other stuff on the internet. Wrong way. Now, I, people know this, but in general, there is new people that haven't heard of this case whatsoever. So I do like to ask stuff like this. What's going on right now? They may be new to this case or listening. Just tuned in today. What steps have you taken so
sorry about that i've just got kicked off the yard i'll redo it again for you i've been having a few there's been a couple of minutes i've been having a few problems with it or anywhere uh, before that so i'll start again with not with the interview but i'll continue And not, but I get what people are saying. I understand when everyone, you know, where everyone is coming from here. But I got to ask you this question and question also to follow up with what I just asked you. How has the support from friends, family been? Has it helped you navigate through this ordeal? My friends and my family have come together a lot. They're calling me every day. They're there when I call them. They give me ideas. They help me figure out where we can go to search. Mm. That's great. I'm, I'm glad that because I've seen it, too. I've seen a bunch of your friends and people pulling up and helping you at these different spots that you are searching and I think it's awesome, the community, the support, the people that are flying in or driving in. I think how we need to continue to be to not only reach out and help whoever we are. It doesn't even matter where you're at. You could be in California right now. Sharing this story out here helps Seth, Sebastian, and the rest of the family in any way that you could possibly think. So everything counts. If you're close, help search. If you are closer, you can make it there somehow. Help search. It's the rudder. 126 River Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37075. You can go there starting Monday. Chris, what's, or uh, Seth, what time is it on Monday? 930. 930 on Monday. You can go and help search at, again, 126 River Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37075. That place, hold on, can you share any messages or appeals to the public regarding your son's disappearance? <coughs> I need people to keep their heads up, their eyes open mm -hmm. on your way to work, on your way to get coffee in the morning, fill up the gas tank. Just keep your heads up and your eyes open. I got you. Now, again, I'm going to ask this too. There's new people arriving in this chat right now. How can people best support you and your family during this time? Both of them. I ask people to hand out flyers. Hand out flyers. Okay. Hand out flyers. You heard the hand out flyers. Share. Right, this goes on for a bit longer, but I can't watch it all. So, well, you can get the gist of the interview. You can hear it in the father's voice. I'm so sorry I lost the stream earlier. I've been having trouble for about five or so minutes beforehand where I wasn't getting any... I was talking, but it wouldn't let, it was showing I was on mute, and I wasn't, but it's saying I was, but I wasn't, but it wouldn't let me, and then all of a sudden it just threw me off. So I'm not going to press my luck anymore, I'm going to call it a night, because it is 10 to 10, 
and um but just to hear his voice this father if they know something i wish cut him out these just give him his son back because one way or the other if they are guilty they are going down if they know something but don't but didn't cause no harm to him then just tell him tell him where he is this father is not going to give up looking and i don't blame him for not wanting for not getting back to him about that interview you know what i mean because like i said every time they do an interview it's just bs coming out of their mouth now that was the interview i was trying to find her i couldn't find it and um she was back home right she then made her way back home and he was still down in memphis apparently working but i also found out as well that apparently she had <laughs> people there putting security cameras in bit like now that's like uh locking the horse up after it's bolted you know what i mean a bit like you see you have, she's a technician she's a home security technician and a house that much that cost that much it just cost a lot there's no way i'd be buying a house they like investing in some home security <laughs> even if it's only a flipping ring doorbell but i've definitely had i've got home security definitely around by the driveway part where the garages are right <coughs> <coughs> But that video that was released which had the cameras on it, the uh, torches on. I still believe it's torches, but <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry. But Seth said, Oh, John, I'm just going to have a little clean. Seth did say that um, he saw the whole of that, interview, uh, that uh, video and what had happened is the person who gave him that video, that home security video, their camera had stopped. Like the clock on it wasn't working and it stopped at 10 past three in the morning but actually that video was about six o'clock in the morning five thirty six o'clock right so and i did when at first i thought mm. right and at first when i first saw it i thought you got those two torch lights yeah then you had them other lights and I said, is that a car? Right? And I thought, if that's a car, right? Fair enough, but, but you know what I mean? But then as he went on, it was only a minute and 20 seconds long. But as it went on, I could swear, in fact, I'm going to pull it up before I go. I'll pull it up. Now give me time to get through it all because it took right down here on my Facebook. So I've got to get right down. Come on. Come on. And I was, oh, for sake. And I could have sworn there was a car. 
ai cũng muốn xài nhờ lạc gì rồi khi ông trở lại trong nó hay but what threw me and I really should have stuck to my guns right, hold on, I'm getting there oh, so, come on what threw me was near the end there's a big heat source coming from somewhere like logs and i kept thinking what the hell is that right now if i ever get down to my facebook page there information is i might be able to show it you um, I can remember how much I posted on my Facebook page. Sorry. Oh, mom. This is ridiculous now. I'm sorry, it's just the same thing, it's running so slow, it's doing my head. My fingers go twice as fast, and I've got a mouse up the rock. Here it is. I'm going to share this. You what? See this here? Now, that looks like a uh, car lot to me. I said that. But when someone was telling me it was at the back of their house, I thought, well, that's the back of the house. But now, watch this down here. Watch this down here. I said, oh my God, someone's walking there. There's someone walking. So I thought, watch that area. There's someone moving there. See it? It's like someone's walking. And then bump all that light comes on that heat and i said then i said is this a car or something because look headlights right so that being the rubbish thing the rubbish uh thing uh what all the uh the big truck that took the rubbish away could that have been what we see seen there? And these are just refuge, refuge men walking along and bringing the rubbish down. Because that did bother me. That big. Oh, I can show it to you guys, wasn't on screen. Sorry, I'll show it again. I'll do it again. Watch this. Right? You got them lights there. Those car lights. <coughs> we'll get these two little spotty things here. We'll get them then. Watch down in this corner. This corner. Watch. Just watch it, you gotta see. It looks like someone's walking. Right? It looks like someone's walking. Because I remember when I first seen it, I thought, oh my god, there's someone walking there. And all of a sudden this heat comes, this light source comes from somewhere. And I said, Oh my god, is that a car? Was that someone getting into a car there? Perhaps that is the future light. But I don't think it's a it meet it could be their neighbours. Right? And that wasn't the front the back area of the house. I think do you know the gap between the neighbour's house as it comes around the corner? Like I think I think it was from there. Because that is the refuge truck. And Seth said 
they watched the video and it went on for a lot longer than a minute or something. It went on for a lot longer. And it showed them pulling away, right? Or turning around or whatever they did and driving it away. And it was because the camera, of that home security camera, had stopped at 10 past, uh, the clock on it had stopped at 10 past three. Right? So really, when they say, oh, this happened at 10 past three, it didn't. It was actually about between half five and six a.m. in the morning. Now, Seth is not going to lie, not even for the, not even for the law enforcement is he going to lie. Right, so, that's that cleared up. The thing about the custody thing, he wasn't going back to court. There was no custody, a changing of custody. They had joint custody. It just meant that he'd, have, he'd be the custodial, he'd be the main custodial carer for Seth, where the mother would only see, have him on the weekends, two weekends a month. Oh, something else I wanted to bring up. A lot of people are saying, why did he go down and not come home in February? He was coming home during January when he was working down there. But then in February, he went down at the beginning and he didn't come back until Sebastian was reported missing. Um, I thought about it and, I heard, and then I was seeing other people say, I think that incident where DCFS came out to him about that incident with the belt, Right, the second incident, not the first, the second incident. I think he was told to move out of the property until the investigation was clear. Right, so I think he was told he wasn't allowed on the property. While Sebastian, while the case was. While I was looking into it, and while it, it was an ongoing investigation for the DCFS. And that's why he was in his five-wheeler and not coming home on the weekends, because he was told to stay away from the property. That happened in Summer Wells' case. John Wells was not supposed to be on that property. That's why John Wells had this little, I believe it was a microwave or something, right, he'd, he'd have, or something like that, I don't know. He had something where he could heat food up in. And he would sleep wherever he was working, whatever houses he, he was working on, John, right, he would sleep in them properties on the night time and he'd eat his meals there and everything else because he was not allowed on 110 Ben Hill Road or 120 Ben Hill Road while the investigation was open right so I think the same thing happened here while there was an investigation open into him using the belt on Sebastian for not having a belt, right? He was told not to come, not to stay on the property. And that's why he was staying down there even on the weekends. Because come on, three, three and a half hours away, you're telling me you would not come home on a Friday evening after work and sleep in your own bed, even if it meant going back Sunday evening, so that you, okay, you slept in your five-wheeler Sunday night, or going back early Monday morning and going straight to work, right? 
you're telling me you will not come home for two nights sleep in your own bed with your wife? Nope. I've heard a lot of women say their husbands work away, right? But they always come home on the weekend. They come home on the weekend. And I, that's, that's the only reason I can think of for him not coming back on the weekend is because he was told by DCFS not to be, he could not be on the property while Sebastian was there. You know, hey, he went back to work the other week, didn't he, last week? Was it last week? <coughs> he went back to work? But this weekend is the weekend. Oh, yeah. He's back home, wasn't he? Because Sebastian isn't there. Keep that in mind, everyone. Just my opinion. Just say, I do think that could be the reason he was not coming home on the weekend. But keep it in mind, because I think that is. And I do think that video, the, the light system. Because don't forget, these, I don't know, like, uh, I'm sure in the UK they wear these fluorescent jackets, the men on the, on the, who pick up the uh, rubbish, the trash. They wear fluorescent jackets. The cars can see them as they're going around and other lorries can see them and all that. Because a lot of the times they're in the roadway. They're in the roads. So they've got to be able to be seen. You know, if it's dark in the morning, and apparently they only work from, is it six, they say? They say? Six, which is sun up, sunrise, until it goes sun down. Right? Once once the sun starts going down, they stop working. Right? So it had to be about six o'clock that <coughs> <coughs> I think it was just put, just before six o'clock. Those will be refuge men come. Well, it was refuge man. I, I honestly believe that. Now I've looked at that video again, and I thought I should have stuck to my gun. I knew there was something wrong with that video. But everyone was concentrating on those two torches, two torchlights. What they said was torchlights. Now we got this information off and what we call a credible person. Once again, he done it for clicks. That came out. How many people went and clicked on that news station channel? How many people went and uh, signed up onto his Facebook page? Right? Clicks and views. Just remember that. Anyway. My throat is not getting any better. And I can't keep thinking like I am because it's not doing me any good. So I'll get off my screen. So I'm going to call it a night. And I hope you all have a lovely evening, wherever you are, or afternoon. And I will be back again tomorrow. Same time, 8 p.m. or 8 hours, or 3 p.m. Tennessee time, is it? I don't know. I don't know. But it's 8 p.m. UK time, and we're five hours, of, uh, we're between five to six hours ahead of you. So, <coughs> and I've looked. Oh, uh, I'd just like to thank everyone on Twitter for staying and watching this and hearing me struggle with my 
<coughs> coughing and my sore throat and my sniffles. I think I'll take some paracetamol tonight. Anyway, I hope to see you all again tomorrow. Till then, stay safe. And if you've got little ones, give them a cuddle. Give them some love. Because this is all this father wants is to give his son the hook. So give your kids that extra special hook. Okay? Till tomorrow. Oh, God. I'm going to have to delete some of this stuff. Till tomorrow. No. Oh, sorry.